So with the success of the channel, we've been getting a lot of comments via email and actually on the community part. And so I wanted to answer one of the questions today that Venice asked. She asked about copywriting and copyright documents for her client. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into that today. What's up everybody, this is Adrian Boysell with the Adrian Graphics and Marketing channel. And today I wanna to talk about copywriting. This is a sensitive area for many artists. If you're creating literary work, written work, graphic designs, illustrations, motion graphics, this stuff is owned by you. It has what's called a soft copyright. You're probably asking yourself, well, what is a copyright? A copyright is a statutory protection over your creative work, whether it's your writing, whether it's your artwork, or whether it's a video or audio. You can copyright these things and you can protect them. And there are different ways you can go. When you originally create it, you have what's called a soft copyright. And when you actually register it, you go to the website copyright.gov forward slash register, you can actually register. There's a registration fee, and that now protects your artwork for up to 70 years after you croak. You know what I'm saying? So it actually protects you for a very long time and you can register that copyright under a corporation or a trust, under your family, whatever you want to do, however you want to do that, that's up to you. And there are certain things that you can copyright and certain things that you can't copyright. So I want to cover that pretty quickly. The things that you can't copyright are slogans, names, symbols, like basic symbols like circles and squares that are very common, lettering. These are just a few of the things that you cannot copyright. Things that you can copyright are things like graphics, illustrations, literary works like books and videos and audio. So these are all things that you can copyright as a creative and protect. You can register them and submit them to copyright.gov. So I wanna give you guys a few pro tips. The first tip I wanna give you is keep your records. Print out a copy of your work and date it, put it into an envelope, seal it, and mail it to yourself and do not open it. This is one of the cheap tricks that we do in the industry to protect it if you're not actually gonna file it legally. There's a caveat here. If you don't file it legally, you don't really have much of a leg to stand on. So this is a really affordable thing that I would suggest that you do is you file the $36 or $40 that it costs to actually file the copyright. But you can also send them a cease and desist letter. If you have an attorney, it could write it up or you can use LegalZoom or some of these other websites to send them a cease and desist letter and let them know that they're infringing upon your copyright. The next thing that I want you to be thinking about as a pro tip is you own all of the artwork. You are the copyright owner, even if it's a soft copyright, of all the work that you do for your clients. Unless you have it written into your agreement that it's not that they own all of the work, you are actually the owner of that. So if you don't get paid, they cannot legally use it, especially if you go and register it, they cannot legally use it unless they have a written copyright release. A copyright release is a really good tool for you to use as a creative, as a designer, motion designer, web designer, so that you make them understand that the, the copy that you wrote, the literary copy that you wrote, the graphics, the illustrations, the layout, and all these things that you've created for them, you own that soft copyright. And if they wanna own that, that should be a different price. When I create artwork for somebody and I just design them a business card and they're gonna use it and they're gonna print it with us, that's one price. But if they wanna take that design and change it or send it somewhere else to have somebody else print it, then they need to own the copyright of that and they need to buy that design outright, which is typically a more expensive price if you're working with me. There are some people that just included in that price, but you need to make sure that you're clear with your clients and that you set that expectation to say, hey, I own the copyright to everything that I do. If you want to own the copyright to this stuff, then that's going to be a different price. And you're going to price that a little bit differently. And then when you do that, after you create that work, you need to give them a copyright release form for each specific piece that you do. This is an important piece that I've incorporated into my business. A lot of my clients don't ask for it. We own the rights because a lot of the copy we come up with, we come up with right out of our head and right through the strategy meetings and things that we do. But these are important things that you need to be thinking about. You can add the little copyright logo once you get it registered, and now you have a leg to stand on in court. Copyright infringement is no joke. You can be fined up to $100,000 for each piece that's printed. 
So if you were to go take somebody's artwork off the internet and go print something, you can be fined up to $100,000 or maybe $10,000. It's either $100,000 or $10,000 per piece. So copyright infringement is no joke. And if it's registered, this is not an area you wanna mess with, especially with other people's artwork. So make sure that the artwork that you're using is original. They do have to prove that it's original, that you've actually taken their original artwork and changed it. But it's really important that you just take your own stuff and customize it. And if it's something that you're taking from somebody else, make sure you give an attribution that you attribute that back to them or link it back to them that they're the original artist and that you just made modifications to it. These are all things that you need to be thinking about for yourself and when you're doing design work. I don't want you to end up getting slapped with a copyright infringement case. It's not something you wanna do. You don't wanna steal. There's that book that all great artists steal, but you gotta make it your own. You need to make it original. You can be inspired by somebody's artwork, but don't just take it and rip it off straight off the point like that. It's not good. And you don't want your clients doing that to you either. It's happened to me. I've had clients take my logos and use them without paying for it. I've had people take my logos that I uploaded online, like Brands of the World, and take it and put their own name on it and not attribute it back to me. And I've actually had to file reports for that. So this is very important for you to understand. Your videos, your content, your illustration, these are all things that you own that are your property and you wanna get them registered. So hope that answers your question, Venice. I'm really grateful to be able to get that question asked and I wanna answer more questions like this. So if you have a question, please drop it down in the comments. I wanna hear more. Let me know what that is. You can email me, you can send a comment down here below, and I just wanna hear from you. I wanna to get to know you more and I wanna collaborate. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful, and I'll see you on the next one. As always, keep looking up.